So hello everyone, uh, my name is Hanan Alauna and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Seged and today I'll be talking about uh, art as a channel for voicing trauma, Marjan, Satra, biographic novel, Persepolis as a model. Uh, the main points I will try to elaborate on in my presentation. Uh, the first one, I will start with a brief introduction about the feminist movement in the East. And then I will talk about uh, women in Iranian literature in particular. And then I will highlight some aspects uh, related to the Oriental feminist discourse. And I will provide like some um, examples from the novel that I'm investigating in my research, Satrapi, Persepolis, on the points and uh, ideas that I'm trying to elaborate on. And then I will end my presentation uh, with a conclusion. Uh, to start talking briefly about the feminist movement in the East, uh, it's important to mention that uh, the feminist movement in its early days was uh, misperceived or misunderstood. Uh, because like it was perceived as um, uh, a, a project that has a political agenda or, or uh, patriarchal uh, purposes. Uh, and this is uh, clear in the school of midwives uh, that was established by the Egyptian modernizer Muhammad Ali in the 1830s. Uh, the purpose behind establishing this school was to show to visiting Europeans how progressive and modern he was on one hand, and on the other hand, to improve the efficiency and enhance the health of his army. So in essence, like. Uh, it does not seek, uh, this school does not seek um, to uplift women and help or improve their, their situation, uh, but it has like patriarchal and political agenda. Uh, this accordingly affects the images uh, that employ to represent uh, women in male narratives. So their images were dyed with patriarchal control and the roles uh, that assigned uh, to women uh, in the male narratives uh, are only roles that are accepted within the patriarchal society, such as obedient wives and mothers. So women appear in the male narratives as only objects. Uh, so like, we can say this confusion about the feminist movement in the um, East uh, result, resulted in like having two groups. Uh, the first group, they, want, they didn't want to accept this movement because they believe that feminism was understood, treated, and criticized as a Western phenomena and product. So it was perceived as a byproduct of modernity and industrial capitalism. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, there's another group who like um, try to benefit from this movement, and they believe that it's good to accept it, and uh, it will make the East more progressive. So the Iranian scholar Tohidi summarizes this um, scene. Uh, saying that since modernity in Iran and in many other Middle Eastern countries have been associated with Western intrusion, colonialism, or imperialism, it has resulted in a mixed feeling. So like there's a fascination with, it's a fascination with progressive aspects of modernity and strong desire to become modern, yet at the same time, a resentment and resistance, ag resistance against Western domination. Uh, however, there are some political uh, leaders in the East uh, that try to adapt this movement. For example, in Turkey, uh, Kemal Atatürk uh, encourages a Western style of clothing for women as a sign of civilization, which includes uh, the Devailing of women. Uh, also in Iran, uh, Reza Shah Bahlavi followed the footsteps of Kemal Atatürk and he introduces what is called the mandatory unveiling in 1936. Uh, but however, in both cases, like we are talking about the mandatory veiling and the mandatory unveiling, so they are still treating women as tools and they are still using them just to achieve political agenda and political purposes. Uh, this accordingly affects the, the situation and the representation of women in Iranian literature. And I will be specific here, uh, and I'm talking about Iranian literature because I'm presenting like Persepolis as an example about the Iranian women's status. So women's writing or classical poems in Iranian literature were created as love poems for and about women. So women were at the center of the poetry um, as uh, only as an uh, object there to 
to be guessed at. And also because of the patriarchal control in Iran, a woman's writing after the 1979 revolution, which uh, introduced the mandatory veiling of women in Iran, a women's writing tend to employ the figurative language in order to avoid the political and patriarchal uh, punishment. So we see in um, women's writing uh, metaphors such as night, cold, and darkness, and silence to refer to the dictatorial condition, and spring light and sunshine uh, to refer to revolution and freedom. Uh, also, another uh, important aspect to talk about is uh, some aspects related to the oriental feminist discourse. Because like there is when we talk about the oriental female and the occidental female, there are some uh, misunderstanding and misconceptions about the situation. So the Iranian scholar Barvin Baidar uh, tried to reflect on this uh, in her uh, analysis of orientalist feminism. For example, it says that what is happening is that uh, the, the discourse on the oriental female assumes that there is a binary opposition between the West and the, East, the, the Orient, where like the Western women appear as um, civilized, educated, while the oriental female is being represented as passive or uneducated. So it, rega it regards the oriental women only as victims and not as agents of social transformation. Uh, another issue is that um, uh, it assumes that uh, all societies in the orient are the same, which means that uh, women in the orient uh, share the same use situation or live within the same uh, social context, which is is uh, like n not true, and uh, one of the reasons that uh, led to this misconceptions and misrepresentations about the Oriental female is that the Oriental female in the past used to be confined and restricted in her uh, harem sphere, uh, which is her domestic sphere that is uh, forbidden for the male or uh, anyone from the public to enter to. However, uh, during the 19th century, the French, Orient uh, the French Orientalist painter, her Nita Brown, uh, uh, managed to enter this domestic sphere, benefiting from her uh, position as a woman during the Ottoman Empire era. And she came up with one painting, uh, which is entitled The Flute Player, where she portrays women as uh, occupying the, the harem sphere and private sphere and uh, veiling uh, themselves. Uh, so what I'm trying to do in my research uh, about Persepolis is uh, trying to refute some uh, conceptions about the oriental female. Uh, but uh, first of all, I will I will introduce uh, the writer I'm talking about, because uh, some of you may not be familiar with her. So Marjan Satrabi uh, was born in 1969, is an Iranian-born French graphic novelist, cartoonist, illustrator, film director, and children's book author. Uh, her graphic uh, memoir, uh, The Complete Persepolis, uh, was translated into many languages, including Arabic, Hebrew, Turkish, and Farisi. Uh, what I'm trying to do in my research is I'm trying to analyze the graphics that Satrabi present her uh, graphic novel Persepolis, uh, where she tries to communicate some ideas about the status of the oriental female. For example, uh, in the first um, uh, the first example that we have here, uh, if we look, for example, at the title, which she chooses the veil because the veil is a problematic issue in Iran. There is uh, next to the the title there is one eye which could symbolize the Iranian regime in the 1979 because they introduces what is called the mandatory veiling of uh, the female. So Satrabi, I think she is trying to reject this uh, imposition of the veil. And this, the veil, and this is there is only one eye which could represent the Iranian Islamic regime, which had the final say in Iran at that time. And also, it's important and interesting to examine the way Satrabi introduces herself. She is she just shared with us her um, arm, if you see. And also the way she introduces her uh, classmates, uh, like they are putting and uh, using the same veil, they are sitting in the same way. So uh, it could be like a critique from Satrabi that uh, she's criticizing the Iranian government that tries to erase all the differences between uh, women. However, it's interesting to notice that Satrabi draws her classmates also with different uh, physical appearance, like there are differences in the, the way they look, their eyes and the hair. 
which could indicate that behind this veil that was imposed on the Iranian female, uh, each woman has her own unique personality, which is different from the, the other. Uh, also, uh, here we, we see Satrabi and the way she draws herself. She's uh, putting on the black uh, cloth, the veil uh, on herself, and she shows uh, no enthusiasm about it. And she is sitting and she's looking at the reader directly as someone who is uh, crying for help. So this shows that uh, her dissatisfaction with the way the Iranian is using women as tools just to sustain their uh, patriarchal control on them. Uh, another important uh, thing that I want to talk about uh, in relation to Persepolis is that Satrabi uh, draws herself in an active position where she confronts the, the principal at school whose uh, main like role is to make sure to apply the, the rules. So she draws herself in an active position. Also, she also represents her mother in, um, as uh, uh, an oriental female shouting for a better future. And uh, she, Satrabi uh, wrote like uh, her mother is brave because she was brave enough to join the demonstrations that uh, reject this mandatory veiling on the Iranian female. So uh, in doing this, uh, Satrabi is trying to refute and subvert the images that are usually associated with the oriental females as being passive and uh, traditional or traditions based uh, subjects and agents. Uh, another important thing is uh, the identity crisis that um, Satrabi suffers from when she had to leave Iran uh, to pursue her studies in Vienna. Uh, she found herself in a completely and totally uh, a place that is different from her Iranian roots and she struggled hard to to adapt to this uh, new lifestyle and her life was not uh, uh, easy and she did not has um, she did not have uh, an easy journey there and she had spent uh, several nights sleeping on the tram and this is clear that her life was not easy from the way that she draws and reflects on her life like everything is chaotic and here Satrabi is trying to subvert this image about the waste like um, where it's usually connected with the land of opportunities and better future and like life is uh, too much easy there, so Satrabi is saying uh, this is not the case and you have to work hard uh, in order to to become an active par participant in life. Also, Satrabi manages to include some signs in her uh, work uh, which could uh, communicate her critique regarding the um, oriental female and she did this without saying it directly. For example, if we look at the, the snake that uh, surrounds the whole frame, uh, it could symbolize the Iranian regime who has the final say and controls all parts of Iran. So Satrabi like, is trying to they criticize the way they behave with the female and they treat the, the Iranian subjects uh, by, by not saying it directly, but by using her arts. So I think she succeeds in doing this. And also uh, the way she refers to the, the way the, ori the, the Iranian regime uh, tortures its opponents. So she only uses black and white colors uh, because her aim is not like to terrify the readers or she is just like reflecting on her on the on the situation there and the communicating her message without having any problems with the or causing any troubles to the readers uh, so these examples uh, I think uh, like they could indicate that in, in in some cases like art could work in communicating the oppression imposed on the female and it could like give us a uh, meaningful messages when we talk about uh, any hardships or difficulties that the individual has in his or her life. That's all. Thank you for your attention.